Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for taking the time now to join us for this important conversation on piloting state level committees to address the serious crisis of toxic air quality. My special thanks to my good friend, Sri T.S. Singhdeoji, Honorable Minister for Health in the Government of Chhattisgarh, for bringing together this group of eminent ministers and legislators from his state on this subject in what I hope is the first and a larger campaign in the fight for clean air. As a board member and the India Head of Air Quality Asia, which has organized this webinar, I thought it would be useful to begin this webinar by formally introducing the organization and its leadership who have joined us for today's call. Air Quality Asia, or AQA, is an international air quality advocacy group, which has since its inception in 2016, spearheaded parliamentary and legislative action as a model towards a critical goal of securing a breathable future for Asia. With ongoing projects in a select few South Asian countries, like India, of course, Indonesia, the Philippines, AQA has in each of these countries worked to support and to bring legislators together in order to develop strong policy frameworks that can deliver measurable improvements in air quality. Today, the organization is represented by its president and convener, Ms. Shazia Rafi, Mr. Matthew J. Nolan, treasurer and board member, and prior to that, a veteran member of the Irish Parliament. AQA works with a number of partner organizations and donor groups <coughs> whose support, including for this webinar, has played a critical role in enabling the organization to deliver strong results in South Asia. I'd also like to introduce and thank my fellow Fletcher School alum, Mr. Vikas Mehta and Kartikeya Singh from SED, as well as Ms. Shweta Narayan for their efforts in bringing this group together. Uh, even as we, as a society, contend with the devastating effects of COVID-19, accompanied by the gradual unlocking of the national lockdown, one silver lining along our collective clouds has been impossible to miss and that's been the bright blue skies and cleaner air we've all been allowed to enjoy. Um, and, and the AQI, the Air Quality Index in Delhi, has actually largely remained at breathable levels. And whenever we have these monsoon showers, the air quality gets even better. But of course, this is an exception rather than the norm. And it'll be uh, foolish in my part to celebrate our clean skies at a time when millions of our fellow citizens are suffering either directly from the pandemic or indirectly as a result of the complete slowdown in economic activity that the lockdowns have precipitated. We have to find a way of creating meaningful livelihoods for our people while giving us clean air so we can live in good health. Now, as a concerned citizen, as well as a board member of AQA and an MP, and I've personally suffered the wheezing and coughing that comes with Delhi's foul air, uh, I thought this was a problem that was critical to our development concerns. And so each year from 2017, when I joined the banner of AQA, 2017, 2018, 2019, I brought together a group of civil society stakeholders, healthcare experts and practitioners, technical experts, and a few fellow parliamentarians to an annual closed door discussion on the magnitude of the current crisis of toxic air quality across India. In these three years, we dealt not only with the current state of air quality, but, I, but we also extended the deliberations to what we could possibly do as concerned citizens and elected representatives to create a national action plan to address the issue. And our uh, platform since 2017 has brought together some of the most accomplished and experienced stakeholders on this issue of vital national importance. Parliamentarians across the aisle uh, got together and finally, uh, last year, representatives from the Government of India, including the Honorable Union Minister for the Environment, Sri Prakash Javadekar, addressed last year's gathering and gave us a comprehensive ideation of the government strategies to address uh, air pollution. We also increasingly realized there were two fundamental deficiencies in the existing campaign for clean air. The first had to do with the lack of political and legislative capital to address the issue. In fact, the issue of air quality in some ways is like our concerns about foreign policy. I've always said that there is no BJP foreign policy or Congress foreign policy. There's only Indian foreign policy. Similarly, with air quality, 
our political differences on the subject must end with the beginning of the stratosphere. You know, once we as a breathing air, no one can fence off uh, the, the, the air in, in, in the in that we're breathing. And, and honestly, despite the magnitude of the crisis, it shocks me there's been so far limited action on involvement in this issue. I, I can tell you very frankly that in my first couple of years around table, I found it impossible to attract a BJP participant. Um, and it was only in my third year when the minister brought on to it that we were able to, to move ahead. So it's been, a, it's been a grind. But policymakers, political outfits, think tanks, legislators, we all have to get together on this. And, and the honest truth is, and I, I was so gratified when my friend Sri T.S. Singhdeoji agreed to do this because the fact is that air quality has not been an electoral issue in India. In India, Neither public health generally nor air pollution specifically has yet won or lost an election for any Indian politician. Air quality is seen as a sort of upper class luxury. The poor can't afford it. That's not true. The poor are biggest victims uh, of, of poor air. It's the poor who have no choice. Those whose lives are dominated by the need for a daily wage, the basic necessities of sustenance. For them, the air around them can really affect their lives. And they have to endure it because they have to live. So I must say that the argument that the political class can afford to ignore air quality because it doesn't affect the poor who are the majority of voters, that is wrong. And all of us politicians listening today, we must understand the majority of our voters are victims of bad air. And it's not a class issue. It is a mass issue. And I, I really want to stress that very, very hard. With, with all of us listening today, because we want to take this campaign to the political class of India, starting today with Chhattisgarh. Let me stress the need for an energized and effective campaign for, for clean air uh, is also complicated by the way in which um, uh, we as a country have approached the problem. You know, the, the government uh, uh, has a very spare, sparse sort of national clean air program which is not terribly actionable. It covers 100 on, 102 centers in a country with thousands of centers. The media just focuses on, on bad air during Diwali because the Diwali firecrackers make <clears throat> the air worse. There's no sustained engagement with a crisis that affects urban and rural India equally. We need to get beyond the New Delhi-centric narrative and begin to incorporate a more holistic approach, including from within our states that in many ways at the front lines of this crisis. But 42% forest cover in Chhattisgarh did not save Raipur from uh, reaching that um, sad position of fourth in the world, as uh, Singhdeoji pointed out. Now, you have been making improvements. We want to encourage you on the path to completely uh, uh, reviving Chhattisgarh's reputation as a, as a green state and moving away from the bad news surrounding the capital city's uh, air quality. I would like to uh, put Chhattisgarh issues and a few general issues uh, on the platform. Like you said and like Shazia uh, mentioned, that air pollution would be uh, being seen in uh, two perspectives majorly. One, uh, the quality of air impacting the uh, environment itself, leading to global warming, leading to melting of ice caps, leading to increasing the uh, sea levels, leading to submergence, uh, all sorts of things, changing weather patterns, ch changing farming patterns, all sorts of things that would be uh, consequential to uh, air, uh, to global warming. The other aspect uh, would basically be impact on health. Chhattisgarh happens to be amongst those uh, states which has uh, very high number of mines and uh, mineral-based uh, industries. And air pollution is amongst the biggest threats to the health of the people uh, today and in times to come. Uh, we are uh, witnessing uh, a large number of cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, among other ailments. And uh, there are shocking reports of people who are close to industrial areas, Raigad, where a very high percentage of the population is afflicted by uh, diseases directly related to mining and uh, air pollution. A very large number, sir. As far as uh, mitigation uh, is concerned, we have the State uh, Health Resource Center through which we are taking initiatives, but we are uh, inching towards universal healthcare goals, 
uh, we are inching towards the uh, SDG goals and hoping to reach them if possible sooner than 2030. The Center for Science and Environment in uh, one of its recent uh, findings indicated that 70% of the thermal power plants, this is the national level, won't meet the new emission standards for sulfur dioxide or nitrogen dioxide or particulate matter, the deadline given 2022. 70% of our units uh, would not be meeting these standards. And so Chhattisgarh uh, will not be an uh, exception uh, for this. An estimated 44.483 million tons of coal has uh, been uh, identified in 12 of the coal fields of the northern portion of Chhattisgarh. What we are seeing today sir, as the biggest health risk is that at every step of generation of electricity by coal-fired thermal power units, the mining, the transportation, the washeries, the preparation of the power plants, the combustion, the disposal of uh, post-combustion uh, wastes, they are very serious risk hazards uh, to the health of the miners, the plant workers, and the residents in the vicinity. Nine out of every 10 living person near Raigarh's coal mine has reported ILSA. And these are the challenges uh, which we have to overcome as public represented, uh, representatives and legislators and as members of your esteemed team. Uh, we recognize the need for clean air there is, a, we would be fishes without water very soon if we don't uh, get our minds and don't get our efforts directed towards correcting these uh, uh, issues and correcting these matters. I'd now like to uh, invite Shazia Rafi, the president and convener of Air Quality Asia, to make a brief presentation on AQA's work internationally, particularly with regard to the subject before us and with the UN SDGs. Shazia, the floor is yours. Honorable Dr. Tharoor, Honorable Minister T.S. Dio, Honorable Ministers Akbar and Agrawal, Honorable Members of the Legislative Assembly, Honorable Nolan, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, namaskar and good evening. On behalf of Air Quality Asia, I welcome you to our first state assembly level convening. We are grateful to the Honorable Health Minister for his critical leadership on clean air. I am particularly heartened by the MLAs who, despite COVID-19 challenges, have joined this effort in this committee. Allow me to share the role that parliamentarians have played in the global agreements on clean air and how AQA India, working with Chhattisgarh's new air quality committee, fits into this global framework. Air pollution is an accelerator of climate change. The same carbon emissions that speed up global warming make air quality worse. Air quality monitoring allows policymakers like you a real-time progress measure. AQA was established in November 2016 to implement the Clean Air UN SDGs 2030. AQA convenes parliamentarians, government officials, UN and development agencies, green finance, um, and civil society to that end. The right to clean air was proposed at the interparliamentary IPU meeting November 2013 by the Parliamentary Working Group on Clean Air. Clean air language was negotiated in SDGs 2030 by September 2015 with strong targets signed by all governments. So it is you, the, the legislators, who started this work on clean air. As you can see, the three clean air SDGs are very specific. They lay out the sources of air pollution and the implementation to be taken by governments. UN agencies, uh, WHO, UNEP, Habitat are assigned as monitors on progress for these SDGs. The World Bank, Asian Development Bank are the affiliated agencies to help fund the implementation of these SDGs. Of the world's cities with the highest air pollution, 18 to 19 out of 20 are in South Asia. 13 to 14, depending on which year or day you are counting, are in India. In addition to the majority of deaths from respiratory illnesses, deaths from asthma, deaths from COPD, air pollution also causes 36% of the deaths from lung cancer, 34% of stroke deaths, and 27 of deaths from heart disease. 
Most important for policymakers is the cost of air pollution to the economy. As you can see from the World Bank 2016 report, India had a 7.8% negative GDP impact in 2016. Later reports show a higher percentage as air pollution levels increase. Money is literally leaking out of the economy due to air pollution. Globally, it was about 5.3 trillion US dollars in 2016. It is much more now. These same funds could have been applied for positive development. When it comes to reversing the course, one often hears it's impossible. It will take decades. We have seen within weeks of the COVID-19 lockdown, air pollution dropped dramatically across the globe. You can see in Delhi itself, blue skies returned. Nature restores itself if man's destructive activity can be curtailed. But of course, we can't permanently shut down the economy. And as you can see, if policies are not changed, pollution returns. And this is across the globe that it returns. So we must and can build back better. We know from data, which there is no time to show you, from the US, Europe, Mexico, Chile, China, that air quality improvement policies work. India is already on that path with the National Clean Air Plan. I understand Chhattisgarh State Resources Board has also installed 20 monitors. But with monitoring, there must be targets, timelines, emission standards for power plants, industry, transport, including moving the transport sector to electric vehicles. Even more important than that is what we are currently doing. With one hand, we are doing the right thing by doing the transition to renewable energy and electric vehicles. But this is a clear visual of the soot going into your lungs, depending on which Euro level fuel is currently allowed on the roads. This is Euro 2 to Euro 5. Euro 6 is zero emission. So that would be an empty bottle. So whose job is it to get implementation of goals and standards and laws done? The bulk of the responsibility and the power to implement is with national and state governments working together with city administration. Air has no boundaries, either within nations or across nations. For example, carbon pollution from China's coal plants crosses the Pacific Ocean, the largest ocean in the world, in two weeks to land on California's shores. We know viscerally how crop burning by farmers in some states affects air quality across India's northern plains. You legislators, federal and state, are ideally suited to building this implementation framework within the state and interstate. You are also political leaders who on the national and international stage can build cooperation through your skills as deal makers, communicators, lawmakers, and ultimately enforcers with oversight on government and industry. Thank you again in the midst of this global pandemic to have affirmed your commitment for all our right to clean air. Dhanyawad. Thank you so much, Azia. That was uh, extremely punchy and at the same time brief. Uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, your presentation on AQA's uh, role in global interventions on this issue. We are all trying to do a little bit to improve the air quality because apart from the towns and cities mentioned, the mining areas are very much affected due to the coal dust. And the worst part is the people there don't realize the impact it is having on their health. The people in the forest, they need to be encouraged to protect the forest. But for that, again, they need, need economic support. Chief Minister Saab and our uh, Environment Minister, he is uh, doing very well uh, to uh, providing uh, quality life to the public. Our Santosh and Prasanata is that the country is only in Chhattisgarh Pradesh. The country is only in Chhattisgarh Pradesh. This is only for the country. This is not only for the country, but for the बल्कि प्रदेश की जनता के उत्तम स्वास्थ्य के लिए भी उपयुक्त है। Air pollution continues to be a significant health concern in Europe, especially in high density cities. Bad air contributes to significant levels of premature death and disease. 
increasing levels of air pollution, especially fine particulates measured as PM2.5, are now recognised as among the most significant causes of premature death worldwide. Based on our experience in uh, the EU, concerted action involving national and subnational state and provincial bodies and city agencies was required to ensure that regulatory requirements are actually enforced. An appropriate and regular budget allocation, indeed a multi-annual uh, budget allocation, is needed. These in turn rely on solid public and political backing for the programme of action. Establishing an effective administration is a gradual process. It won't happen overnight, and we don't expect it to happen overnight. Therefore, changes in regulatory regi regimes under India's national clean air plan and state level plans needs the support and a budget of all states. So I think we've had a very good uh, opening meeting and I wish you and your committee continued success and hopefully this will branch out into other states within India. Thank you very much.